honor and the praise and the glory. So let us begin with prayer even now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your peace on today. We thank you for your love on today. We thank you for your joy on today. For it's a privilege and an honor to know you, to serve you. Amen. To be a servant in your kingdom. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do during this broadcast. We thank you for your healing power. If there be any sickness among us, we thank you for divine healing on today. We thank you, Lord God, for lifting our burdens on today. And we are excited, Lord God, for we know, hallelujah, that you're able to move exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that work it within us. We thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost that gives us the strength to keep moving in the kingdom and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. We know that we're no longer strangers nor foreigners, but fellow citizens of the household of the saints. And we thank God for that apostolic prophetic fire on today, that anointing that brings forth truth. Amen. And I want to say, even as we continue in prayer, Lord God, that there are miracle signs and wonders that are going to be released during this broadcast. Of course, we are excited. We are blazed up on today. Amen. For what God is going to do. We have even some announcements on today. We want you to join us on this Saturday with Clarion Call Ministries. That's March the 5th at 9.30 a.m. And that's located at 43816 Woodward Avenue in Bloomfield Hills, 48. 302. Amen. That's right. We're going to be with Clarion Call Ministries. A clear call for 2016. Stir up the gift in you. Amen. Stir up the gift within you. Amen. So we want you to come out, learn, be blessed, and be activated in your prophetic gift. Amen. With Elder Stephen Mack, we are excited. Amen. For Clarion Call and that we're going to be sharing that word of truth. Amen. On this Saturday at 9.30 a.m. from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30. Amen. We will be sharing the word of the Lord. And I am Apostle C. Amen. And we also want you to tune in every morning with us with uh, Periscope, with Morning Tea, with Apostle C. Amen. Where we're sharing, amen, how to tear down Satan's kingdom. Amen. By exposing truth in dealing with demonic spirits. So we are excited on today, and we want to move forward, amen, with our broadcast on today, amen. Also, we want you to know that we're located at World, Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries, and that's 1911 Horger Street in the city of Lincoln Park, Michigan. That's 48146. If you have one emergency, if you have just one emergency, we want you to bring it out. The power of God is moving. We have documented healings that's taking place, and God is doing some supernatural things. Amen. We walk in the realm of the supernatural. Amen. And our worship is awesome, led by Pastor Rudy Lewis, Jr. Amen. Our youth pastor, Rudy Lewis, Jr., and we thank God that even on this past Sunday was Youth Sunday. Amen. And one of our developing prophets went forth. Amen. Was Sean Warren. Amen. And we thank God for that word that the promises of God are being released. Amen. And he talked specifically about obedience. And we're glad to have young people who are on fire for the Lord. Amen. Young people on fire for the Lord, and we thank God for Pastor Rudy and our youth staff, Youth on Fire, amen, that's teaching and training our children in the ways of the Lord. So if you have young people, amen, who want to come out and learn about God and want to be a part of dynamic youth team, amen, you need to bring them out to Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries, amen. We want to move forward. In the word of God. And we're going to go to the book of Acts on today. Found in Acts the 16th chapter. Amen. Acts the 16th chapter. Amen. Amen. And we thank God.
Hallelujah. For those of you who have tuned in, who are listening, and those of you who are watching. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Amen. The same followed Paul and us. Right, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, will show unto us the way of salvation. And this be many days. But Paul, being grieved, amen, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour when her master saw. That the hope of their games were gone. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Amen. And so we understand. Amen. That And brought them to the magistrate saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Amen. So I want to talk a little bit about this familiar spirit, amen, that this damsel, she had what we call a familiar spirit, a familiar spirit, amen. She had a familiar spirit, amen. And so a familiar spirit we want to talk about today because familiar spirits are, are demons, amen, that collect the details about you, about the people of God. Amen. They look at your personal life, your personal talent, your ha habits, your resources. Amen. Your mental abilities. Amen. They look at your weaknesses, your tendencies, your educational abilities. Amen. How you respond to various situations. They become familiar uh, with people without you even being aware of them or noticing them. Familiar spirits, they come to manipulate, amen, your life by transferring, amen, what they know about you to a demonic system, amen, or to the demonic database. In other words, they share that information with Satan, amen. They are literally uh, spirits that become familiar with you and your personality. Amen. And so this damsel, amen, she was possessed with a spirit of divination. Amen. Because these demons, I want to talk about it a bit because sometimes people think they're operating in, in uh, the spirit of prophecy and they have a familiar spirit. Amen. And so when something is familiar with you, it become intimate, an intimate associate with you. Uh, it is it is presumptuous. Amen. It begins to get common with you. Amen. It becomes closely related to you as like a companion. Amen. Or one who is well acquainted with how you operate, how you move, uh, how you how you wear your clothes. Amen. Or uh, how you administer uh, your, your ministry, how you function in ministry. So in other words, familiar spirits are demonic agents who main assignment is to become well acquainted with a person or a group of people. We could call them like household servants, amen, or household demons. Amen. I'm going to talk about it a little bit because we need to be able to identify familiar spirits. Amen. The Bible said that this damsel, these people were on their way to prayer. Amen. When a certain damsel met them with a spirit of divination. So a spirit of divination is likened unto a spirit, amen, that can prophesy but it doesn't use the Holy Spirit to prophesy. Amen. It used demonic spirits to prophesy. Amen. So it's likened unto a spirit of the spirit of Python. Amen. The spirit of Python, which is used by fortune tellers. Amen. That's right. We come to bust up 
the fortune tellers, amen, the soothsaying spirits, the witches and the warlocks, amen, who disguise themselves, amen, as if they can prophesy to you. They're prophesying from the dark kingdom. They can't prophesy in the realm of light because they're not connected to God. Y'all hear what I'm saying now? Amen. So we want to dismantle and dethrone every demonic system of familiar spirits that will try to prophesy and speak into the life of God's people. We come to shut it down on today. We're going to shut it down on today because we need to identify familiar spirits because sometimes people are operating in the kingdom of God, but they have these demonic spirits attached to them. So we need to expose every lie of the enemy. Amen. So I come today. My assignment today is to expose familiar spirits. I'm going to go back because familiar spirits are demonic spirits that are responsible for satanic surveillance. In other words, amen, they come to watch you, amen, to, to watch how you act and how you respond to different situations in your life, amen. And they, in other words, they are watcher demons, amen. They are scanner spirits, amen, to come to see, amen, how you react and respond to different things that take place in your life, amen. Not only are they scanner demons, or watcher spirits, amen, but they are evil spirits with assignments, amen, that come to kill, steal, and destroy, amen, because this young girl was possessed with a spirit of divination. She followed, amen, the men of God, amen, as they were on their way to prayer because she wanted to stop them. She wanted to vex their spirit to stop them from doing the work of the ministry, amen. So these spirits gather information through observation of who you are, amen, and how you operate, how you function in life. They create a file on a particular person, amen, where they gather information about you. I'm talking about familiar spirits, amen. These spirits, amen, they are, are, are demonic spirits. They come to operate, amen, with a human spirit that will stop you from being all that God has called for you to be. They come to po possess a human spirit, amen, in other words, they want to make un want us to make an unholy alliance, amen, with the dark kingdom. This is what happens with witches, amen, and warlocks, amen. They use familiar spirits, amen, and they come, amen, to form an unholy alliance with a witch or a warlock, amen. So familiar spirits are are assigned to particular people, and they can communicate, amen, with the dark kingdom, amen, to try to expose, amen, to try to expose somebody, amen, or come into their life to seemingly to act like a spirit of prophecy, amen, but it's not a spirit of prophecy, it's a familiar spirit, amen, so a spirit, a, a familiar spirit is a spirit that comes to try, try and find out your personal and psychological characteristics of a particular person. So this, this young girl, she was possessed with a spirit of divination. Amen. And the Bible says that she was crying out that these were the serv they were servants. Amen. She said these men are the servants of the Most High God. Will show unto the way of show unto us the way of salvation. Amen. But Paul became grieved by this unclean spirit. Amen. Because he knew it didn't come from the Holy Spirit. It didn't come from the Spirit of God because it vexed him. It grieved him. Amen. So it was a spirit that came even though it was trying to expose, to speak the truth. Amen. But it was the purpose of Satan that was operating through this young girl was to try to discredit the message of the apostles. Amen. So a familiar spirit come to try to discredit. Amen. Whatever we're doing for God, 
It comes to try to discredit the message of the apostles. Amen. By making people think that they were in a league with demonic spirits. Amen. So that's what happens. This familiar spirit wants the people of God or want to give the appearance that Paul and Silas were associated, amen, with this demonic spirit to discredit what they were speaking, amen, and how they were operating in ministry. So it's so important as, as men and women of God that we take notice to those people who are around us, amen, because the devil wants to wants to attach itself to us, amen, to discredit who we are. But we're going to wage war on that satanic demon, amen. It's a spirit of divination. It's a soothsaying spirit. It's a familiar spirit. Spirit. Amen. So a familiar spirit would try to create a soul tie in the realm of the spirit went to create covenants to cause one to make a covenant of an unholy alliance. Amen. So in other words, they learn everything they can learn about an individual. Amen. Because remember, they want to discredit who you are. As a believer, amen, as a man or a woman of God, they come to try to discredit you, amen. So we see that this familiar spirit was seeking financial gain, amen. And so it wanted to discredit the men of God, amen. And so the man of God, Paul got vexed. He got tired of hearing this young girl, amen, even though she was saying it. But it wasn't coming from the right realm. It wasn't coming from the realm of God. It was coming from the realm of Satan. Amen. And so these demonic spirits, these familiar spirits, I want to go back over. Because the purpose of the familiar spirit is, try, is to try to get closely related to you. Amen. To study you. To become intimate. An intimate associate of you. Amen. It's trying to become well acquainted with you, with your likes and your dislikes, to understand your pressure point. Amen. To understand, amen, what makes you tick. Amen. This spirit is a, a spirit that becomes common with you. Amen. It, it, in other words, it wants to. It wants to expose, amen, your weaknesses. Amen. This spirit comes. It studies you. It's like, it's like a, a spirit that that surveillance you, amen, that watch you and scans your motive and your ideas, amen, to try to take from you, to try to discredit you. It wants to form an attachment to you in the realm of the spirit, amen, to why? To bring impurities to your spiritual gift. That's why it's important, amen, that we submit our giftings, our spiritual gifts uh, to the Lord. Amen. Because we know that the Bible said gifts and callings are without repentance. So we all always have to yield. Amen. And submit ourselves under the almighty God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's imperative that we learn how to function and operate in our spiritual giftings so we can identify when something unclean and pure has come to attach itself to us, amen, to try to hinder us from moving forward in the things of God. As we see in this, in this scripture that this was a damsel, amen, and she followed them to prayer, amen. So she followed them, amen, and so she wanted to discredit the men of God, even though she was saying who they were. And that's how a familiar spirit operates. It, it wants you to go to a psychic, a soothsayer. It wants you to go some and pay your money. Amen. Because remember, the uh, uh, a characteristic of this spirit is that it's going to seek financial gain. Amen. It's going to tell you something, but it's going to seek financial gain. It's going to have you to pay for. Amen. To get a word from the Lord. And how many of you know you don't need to pay for, amen, a word? from the Lord as freely as we we're giving it freely freely as we have given it amen freely you should receive amen in other words you don't have to pay for a prophetic word amen when God is speaking to you he's going to tell you what you need to know about yourself your life amen and so it's imperative that we understand that God is an abomination for us to go to psychic 
soothsayers, amen, enchanters, amen, witches and warlocks, amen. They use a familiar spirit, a spirit of divination. They operate with a spirit of python, amen, a spirit of python, amen. It's a spirit that comes to choke the prophet, to stop the prophet from prophesying, amen. It's a spirit that comes to try to hinder you from doing what God has ordained for you to do, amen. It's like it's the same spirit that the fortune tellers use. Amen. It can only prophesy to you from a dark realm. It's only prophesied so it'll hit and miss. Amen. Because it's not connected to the Holy Spirit to prophesy light unto you. That's why it's imperative if you are a prophet that you receive proper training and proper, te proper teaching concerning how to administer and maximize the full potential of your gifting. We see so many, so many developing prophets who get off, who veer to the left hand path because they have not been taught or trained as to how to function in prophetic ministry. Amen. It's a lot of voices out here, a lot of sound in the realm of the spirit. So we don't want to be an echo. We want to be the voice that God has ordained, an original voice. See, because God doesn't need an announcer. Amen. He wants somebody who will bring truth. Amen. And revelation, revelatory truth to a situation. Amen. So he's looking for somebody who will purify their gifting and allow him to use them. In other words, allow God to maximize the potential that he's placed on the inside of us so we can wage war on a demonic kingdom. I believe today that somebody is going to get free from the, a familiar spirit. Somebody is going to get free from the spirit of divination. Divination is to prophesy and to use anything other than the Holy Spirit. Some people use water witching. Some people use divining rod. Some people use tarot cards. Some people use crystal balls. But I come to bust it up on today. You don't need anything but the Holy Spirit to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to the church. We come against the demon of witchcraft on today. We crush every satanic power of witchcraft, soothsaying, fortune telling on today. Amen. We uproot. Amen. Every demonic spirit. Amen. A divination. The spirit of Python. We cancel it right now. Every false spirit of prophecy. False dreams. Amen. We bust it up on today. False teaching. False teachers. The spirit of error. We pull it down on today. And we declare and decree the spirit of truth to be released over the airways. Over the radio waves. Amen. And those who are watching and those who are listening. If there be a spirit of error on you, a spirit of divination, a spirit of a familiar spirit that has attached itself to you. We cast it down right now in the name of Jesus. I, be, I believe God on today. Amen. That God is purifying and sanctifying our gifts. See, in order to operate in the fullness of your prophetic call, amen, you must surrender the gifting that God has placed upon your life, amen, because it's not your gift, but the gifts come from the Holy Spirit, amen. These are the gifts of the Spirit, and we talk about them on a regular basis on Thursday nights, amen, in our prophetic class, our apostolic prophetic class, we're talking about the giftings, amen, the gifts of the Spirit, so we understand that God has he has information, revelation, and instruction on how he wants us to operate in the gift, spiritual gifts. Amen. It's not doing it the way we want it haphazardly, but we have to be taught and trained. Amen. We have to be taught and trained. And that's something that we do at WPKM. Amen. Because we believe, amen, in operating in the spirit of excellence. And that excellence, the Bible said that Daniel had an excellent spirit. Amen. Because he yielded himself under the power of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So in order to be excellent, we have to be efficient and effective in what God is calling us to do right here, right now. Amen. What I'm talking about now, I'm talking about the spirit of obedience. I'm talking about the spirit of obedience. Amen. And so when you walk in the spirit of obedience, God give you the authority to cast out demonic spirits. So what's going to happen because, amen, 
as we look at this account in the book of Acts chapter 16, that apostle Paul, amen, because he was obedient in doing what God had told him to do. In other words, he had the gift of the gift of discerning of spirits was in full operation. He discerned, he became vexed. He was so sensitive in the spirit realm that he was able to discern that even though this woman was speaking truth, that she had a spirit of divination. Let me tell you something about the gift of discerning a spirit is a gift of supernatural enablement. Amen. It's an on-site gift. It's a gift of the now. It's a, revel a revelation gift. Amen. It's not an educated guess, but it's a gift that God reveals in the realm of the spirit, the nature and the character of the realm of spirits. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So you've got to be able, if you're going to operate in deliverance ministry, amen, and you want God to use you to maximize the fullness of the potential of God on the inside of you. Amen. You've got to allow him to teach you and train you in the gifts of the spirit. Amen. So what we're talking about now is identifying, being able to identify a familiar spirit. Amen. So if you have someone, amen, that's uh, becoming closely related to you, amen, common, trying to get real common with you. Amen. You need to ask God, God, did you bring them in my life or did Satan bring them in my life? Amen. I need to know who's in operation here. Amen. I need to know. Amen. Because a familiar spirit, amen, is, has an assignment to find out your likes and your dislikes. A familiar spirit want to attach itself to you to discredit you in the eyes of the people of God. Amen. It wants to attach itself to you to discredit you. Amen. So you won't be able to walk in the fullness of the potential that God has ordained for your life. I'm going to say it again. These are the demons that are responsible. Amen. They are responsible for the scanner spirit, the watcher spirit that come to watch you, the eavesdropping spirits that come to watch you, to listen to your conversation, to watch your reaction. Amen. In times of opposition, in times of emergency, just to see how you're going to respond or react to a different situation. Amen. These are evil spirits with the assignment. Amen. Amen which come from a highly developed complex satanic operation, amen, that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy who you are, your character, amen. Not only that, they gather information through observing you. I'm talking about familiar spirit. They create a file, amen, that contain detailed records about a particular person or subject that they have been assigned to, amen. Not only that, is that they pass this info along to other demons, amen, in the satanic database to use against you in, few, in future references, amen, as you walk your Christian walk, amen. So they also operate independently of, of a human spirit, amen. And so in other words, they can possess a human being who have become one of their agents, these spirits can possess a human being that has become one of their agents. What I'm talking about? I'm talking about in the form of witchcraft, in the form of wizardry. I'm talking about by becoming a fortune teller, a psychic, a soothsayer, an enchanter. Amen. So the Bible talks about this. Amen. A familiar spirit. Amen. That forms an unholy alliance. Amen. With the witch. Amen. When we look in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 28, it talks about the witch of Edor. Amen. She had a relationship. Amen. With a familiar spirit. She had crossed over into the dark world, the dark kingdom, and she was able to see demonic activity. Amen. Why? Because she had a familiar spirit operating with her. Amen. That's why it's an abomination for us to go to a psychic or a soothsayer, a witch, amen, to try to find out our future. It is an abomination, amen, unto the Lord, amen. A familiar spirit is on assignment against a person, amen. It's an on assignment against you to stop you from doing what God has ordained for you to do in your life. I'm talking about familiar spirits, being able to identify familiar spirits. Not only that, amen, they come, amen, 
to what? To discredit. Amen. To discredit your personal and your psychological characteristics. Amen. They come to learn everything about you. Amen. To hinder you from moving forward in ministry. Amen. Not only that, they come to attach themselves to you in the spirit realm. So it'll be hard for you to break out. Amen. For it, so it can be hard for you to break out. We find sometime when people have operated in ministry for so long and they done faked it for so long. Amen. So when the spirit of truth come, they don't want to receive the truth. And we were talking a little bit about it today earlier. Amen. With more in morning tea, we were talking about the spirit of pride and how the spirit of pride is the armor of Satan. Amen. It comes to protect self. The spirit of pride comes to perfect protect self. Amen. The spirit of pride will not betray self. It will not expose self. Amen. It will not, it will not talk against self. Amen. The spirit of pride. Amen. It idolizes self. Amen. It, it covers self. In other words, so a familiar spirit, if someone is operating with a familiar spirit, the armor of pride will keep them bound by the spirit of, by, the, by that familiar spirit, except the Holy Spirit and God bring a strategy to give deliverance to that particular person. Y'all hear what I'm saying on today. Amen. We come to wage war. Amen. So what happened in this situation, what happened in this situation is that Paul got sore vexed. He got sore vexed by this damsel until he turned around and said to the spirit. He spoke to the spirit within because it grieved him so. He was operating in such a high level of discernment, even though the spirit was in the young girl, said that this, he was a man. These are men are the servants of the most high God who show unto us the way of salvation. This was true. But because he was in a high level of, of gift of discerning of spirit, he was walking in revelation knowledge. Amen. He understood that this spirit came to discredit him. By, make, by, by connecting, trying to connect with the message of the apostles to make people think, amen, to make people think that they were in a league with demonic spirits, making them what? Making them too associating with the medium that was using, with the medium that was using the damsel, amen. So the people, were, it, it, this demon wanted to to wanted the people to believe, amen, that they were doing miracles by the devil. Y'all hear what I'm saying now? This is what the demon wanted. She wanted to attach herself with Paul, amen, and Silas, amen, to discredit them. So this is why we've got to identify the familiar spirits that are around us, amen, because they come to discredit who we are in the realm of the spirit, amen, because they wanted, they wanted the people to believe that Paul, the apostle Paul, that they were doing miracles by the devil, amen, to discount, to discredit the gospel, amen. And so what he had to do, he had to turn around and cast the demon out. Amen. The Bible said that Paul became so grieved. He became so grieved by this spirit. Amen. That he turned around and said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Amen. And I don't know about you. Amen. But I'm not looking for demons. But when they rise up, I'm going to slay them in Jesus name. Amen. So I'm going to identify. I'm going to say it again. God want us to begin to identify these familiar spirits that have come into our lives. I said, God want us to identify the sp familiar spirits that have come into our lives. Amen. These are spirits that are on assignment to try to discredit who we are in the kingdom. Amen. They come to try to discredit who we are in the kingdom. In other words, in other words, amen. They come to, they want to know our likes our dislikes. Amen. They want to know our strength. They want to know our weaknesses. They want to know our passions. They want these familiar spirits want to know our pet peeves. They want to know what motivates us. Amen. They want to know what stagnates us. 
They want to know what makes us angry, what causes us to react and respond. They want to know what intimidates us. They want to know what makes us happy. Amen. They want to know what makes us sad. They want to know what uh, what distracts us. Amen. They want to want to know what makes us focus. They want to know what our desires are. Amen. They want to know what our ambitions are. Amen. They want to watch our action and our reaction. They want why? Because they want to detour us and dispattern us. From the path and the destiny that God has ordained for our life. It's likened unto the woman. Amen. Amen. The woman who, Delilah, who tried to find out the weakness of Sam, Samson. Amen. She kept asking him. She kept asking him what was his strength. She was working with a familiar spirit. I'm going to say it again. Familiar spirits. They want to know how to get a reaction out of us. Amen. They want to know how to get a reaction out of God's people. I want you to write it down. Amen. Amen. Familiar spirits. They want to know. They want to know our likes. They want to know our dislikes. They want to know our strength. They want to know our weaknesses. They want to know our passions. Amen. They want to know our pet peeves. Amen. They want to know what motivates us. They want to know what stagnates us. They want to know what hinders us, what makes us angry, what makes us happy, what makes us sad, what intimidates us. Amen. What makes us happy? What makes us distract? What distracts us? Amen. They want to know what makes us focus, what makes us desire, what causes our desire, what our desires are. Amen. They want to know what our ambitions are and they want to know what our reactions are. How do we react or respond in the time of drama, trauma, and trouble? Amen. In the times of opposition. Amen. They want to know emphatically what detours us and what dispatterns us from the things that God has ordained for us. So in other words, these are demons, amen, that use gatekeepers and, and doorkeeper spirits, amen, to try to change and prohibit our families and, and our, our, us from moving forward in the things of God, amen. They try to, they try to sit at gate. I'm talking about demonic gatekeepers now that come to try to detour us and try to, to, uh, uh, cause us to go in a different direction in which God has ordained for our life. But I believe today that somebody is going to begin to recognize and identify, amen, where these spirits are operating. Because some of you listening right now, you have some familiar spirits in your life by way of different people who have connect them to, connected themselves to you. Amen. And God, I'm going to pray that God begin to show us. Amen. These spirits are dangerous. Why? Because they're able to inflict injury and harm to our reputation. Amen. And, and sometimes they, if you not, you don't deal with them carefully. Amen. They will come to try. Amen. To discredit you publicly and openly. Amen. Why? Because they become familiar with who you are. They find out the intricate things about you. Amen. To try, remember, to discredit who you are and your ability to function in the spirit, in the realm of the spirit. Remember, familiar spirits want to, uh, they want to bring an unholy alliance in the realm of the spirit to contaminate your spiritual giftings. They want to contaminate your spiritual giftings and want to discredit who you are. Amen. So you don't come out, amen, full of fire, but they want you to be dull in the realm of the spirit. Amen. So it's important, amen, that we identify. See, so Paul, he saw the purpose that Satan had placed this young damsel uh, uh, on their path. He saw the purpose. Amen. So what he had to do, he had to turn around. He had to turn to the demon, not the girl, but he commanded the demon to come out of the girl. And it did. It responded to the authority, the ability, and the anointing that was on Paul's life. Amen. So it's important now. It is important, amen, that we begin to walk in a level where we can cast demons out 
Y'all hear what I'm talking about. Amen. Because this spirit of Python is a, a, a spirit of divination slash Python. Amen. It's a demon that come to try to choke the mouth of the prophet. Amen. You want to ch choke the mouth of the prophet. Amen. It's responsible for causing people to cough. To uh, be hoarse, amen, when you function in ministry, amen, it's a demon that's been sent to try to stop the prophet from going forth, amen, it's a snake demon, I'm going to say it again, it is a snake demon, amen, and it come, it come to try to stop the prayer, amen, it try to stop the prayer and the prophets from going forth in prayer and prophecy, amen, this is a demon that come to try to stop the prophets from moving forth in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because when you begin to walk in the mantle of the prophet, when you begin to function in the highest potential that God has ordained for you, amen, the devil can't handle you. Amen. When you in the fullness, amen, on maximizing the potential of the prophetic call that's upon your life, the devil cannot handle you. Amen. He cannot handle handle you. Amen. When we talk about prayer and going to the house of God, a place of worship. Amen. Amen. Where the prophets would go. Amen. Where the prophets are ordained to be in the house of God. Amen. When we go to prayer. Amen. We have to make sure that we shut down all familiar spirits. Amen. So we can begin to prophesy. Amen. With the thrust, with the authority that God has ordained for us. Don't you know a person don't have to be in front of you for you to begin to prophesy. God want us to prophesy, amen, to the atmosphere. He want us to speak geographically, amen. He want us to speak out, amen. He want us to speak, amen, in, on cultural assignments. He want us to speak on individual assignments. He want us to speak on geographical assignments, amen. So as prophets of God, we can begin to prophesy, amen, like we're prophesying now, amen, that there's a changing of God in the state of Michigan. And even months ago, we said, Said that God was getting ready to he was getting ready to expose the corruption in our government amen so we see that the corruption have been exposed amen in our government amen where that people have been passing along amen that Flint water problem it just didn't start overnight y'all hear what I'm saying amen but God had to expose it and when the prophets began to speak began to declare and decree that all corruption would be exposed out of the government now hey, amen now the emails have been released amen now conversation hidden conversation have been released why we're going to get to the root of every problem every situation that's been swept under the rug why because the prophets are speaking now we're going to pull back the dark layers the dark covers that's been going on in the government of this city amen and God's getting ready to change the guards I'm telling you folks are going to start dying. Amen. If they don't get out of the way and allow God to be God in this state of Michigan. Y'all hear what I'm saying on today. God is removing all familiar spirits, every corrupt demon. Amen. That has been hiding and been sweeping under the rug. It's a spirit of greed that has been loose over the government in the state of Michigan. But I come to tell you, there's a changing of God. And God is getting ready to put people in position. Amen. Who have a heart after him. Who have have an affinity who are surrounded amen with godly leadership to steer them in the right direction I'm telling you God is getting ready to promote some people he's going to sit some people down that's right there's a changing of God in the government and this changing of God is not only in political government but you watch even in church government you're going to see people who've been on the back side of the mountain people who are not afraid to surrender before God to cry out before God you're going to begin to hear Amen. These leaders in the forefront. I hear the Lord say, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. God is going to bring back those who are not afraid to speak truth. Amen.
amen, who will bring the unadulterated gospel, amen, over the airways, over the TV, amen, over the broadcast, over the social media, who's not afraid. I hear the Lord say he's going to protect his own. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I hear the Lord say that there's a divine parameter of the blood of Jesus that shall shield and protect in the high place. It shall shield and protect in the high place. So I want to say to the prophets on the day, I challenge you to open up your mouth. Spare, cry loud and spare not. Take the cotton out of your mouth. Amen. Don't allow the spirit of divination to cower you down. Don't allow the familiar spirit to cower you down. But speak the word of God. Speak in boldness. Speak in love. Speak in truth. Allow God to use you. Amen. Wherever you go. That's what I hear the Lord saying. And I'm getting ready to pray. I'm going to pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord God. You're raising up prophets who will not compromise the word of God. That you setting, shutting down, Lord God, the false teachers and the false prophets who coming forth with familiar spirits. Lord God, with false, false dreams. We thank you, Lord God, that you're bringing forth a spirit of truth. That you're shutting down demonic, demonic uh, uh, systems, God. And you're bringing forth new prophetic strategies to wage war on the enemy. We thank you, Lord God, that the demon of corruption shall be removed and dismantled out of this city in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you're placing new leaders. Oh, God. Ah, oh, my God. We thank you now for new leaders that you're releasing, God. Oh, God, those who will understand and those who will operate, those who will be obedient to the leading of the Lord. We thank you now in the name of Jesus that no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rise against us in judgment, thou shalt condemn, for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. I thank you now, God, that the leaders, Lord God, these mayors over the different cities in the state of Michigan, they're going to begin to turn, Lord God, to the prophets of God. They're going to begin to seek your face as to how to lead these cities. Oh my God, I thank you, God, for every demonic system. You got a prophetic strategy that will bring your people out of bondage. I thank you now, Lord God, that you're raising up new leaders, God. You're raising up new prophets, God. Those who are not afraid, Lord God. Hallelujah, the kingdom of darkness. We thank you for new intercessors, God. We thank you for apostolic, prophetic kingdom intercessors who will go in the gates of hell and take back what Satan has stolen from your people. We thank you for breakthrough believers. We thank you for a new move of God that's going to sweep, Lord God, a sweep America that's going to sweep the state of Michigan on this summer, God. We thank you, Lord God, that we're taking church huh, outside of church, huh, outside of the four-wall edifice. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God, for worship in the park. We thank you for worship on the corners. We thank you, Lord God, for worship in the barber shop, in the beauty shop. We thank you for worship at the doctor's office. We thank you for worship in the hospitals, God. We thank you, Lord God, for worship in the open when we give you the praise, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're strategically raising up uh, those who are not afraid, God. Uh, oh, God, we thank you, Lord God. Those you have been grooming, those you've been training, God. Those who you've been sharpening, Lord God, their quiver. Oh, God, the weapons in their quiver, God. We thank you, Lord God. Uh, those who walk with the insignia, Lord God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, that Jesus is Lord. Lord God, we are the ones you're going to use, God, in this day. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor and the glory. We thank you, Lord God, even for our youth, Lord God, who are not afraid to open up their mouths, God, and declare and decree the will of God. We thank you for a prophetic evangelistic mantle that shall be released. God, that we will begin to prophesy wherever we go, God. Oh, God, that we will win souls for the kingdom. Them. Lord God, their souls will be won unto the body of Christ. That the social media will be used, Lord God, to win souls for your kingdom. That the spirit of truth shall take over, oh God, and shut down all demonic activity. We give you the praise now. In
in the name of Jesus. We say have your way God. For Jesus is Lord in America. Jesus is Lord in Michigan. Jesus is Lord in Illinois. Jesus is Lord in Ohio. We give you the praise God. That Jesus you are Lord in every state. In the United States. We thank you Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord God that new intercessors are being raised up. New leaders are being raised up. Lord God that there will be a new flow. Of your, your spirit Lord God. In political government. In church government. In family government. God we thank you now. For the power of the Holy Ghost. And we say no weapon. Formed against us. Shall ever prosper. And we give you the praise God. For you are king. Jesus you are king. You are Lord. You are Adonai. You are Elohim. You are Yahweh. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor. And the glory. We rebuke all familiar spirits and we shut them down in the name of Jesus and we send them to the pits of Tartarus in that we thou shall not suffer a witch to live in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you all, those of you who want to receive even more teaching on this level to come out to Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries. We're located at 1911 Hoyer Street in the city of Lincoln Park, Michigan. That's 48146. Amen. We're located at the corner of Dix and Southfield, Michigan. If you have one emergency, I challenge you to bring it. Amen. Even on tomorrow, if the weather permits, we will be there. Amen. At 6 p.m. If not, we're going to be taping on Periscope. Amen. The class is at 6 p.m. And our apostolic prophetic class at 7.30 p.m. Amen. So we want you to join us every morning for morning tea with Apostle C. Where we tear down Satan's kingdom and giving God all the glory that he deserves. And we thank God for your listening on today. Share the broadcast. Tell somebody to tune in to www.kingdomvision.info. Amen. Amen. Your life will never be the same. Once again, meet us this Saturday at Clarion Car Ministry. Amen. Clear, a, a clear call for 2016. Stir up the gift of God within you. That's March 5th at 9.30 a.m. Amen. At St. George Cultural Center. That's 43816 Woodward Avenue in Bloomfield Hills, 48302. I will be going forth in ministry. Amen. The donation is $15 in advance and twenty dollars at the door god bless you we love you stay tuned for youth on fire with with pastor you youth pastor rudy lewis at 4 30 god bless you hallelujah Thank you to all my sponsors and Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries. You can catch Kingdom Vision archives at worshipcenterradio.net and click on Kingdom Vision. Come out to Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries at 1911 Horger Street. We're located in the city of Lincoln Park, Michigan, 48146. Our Sunday school is 9.30 a.m. And morning worship is 11 a.m. Thanks again for listening. God's willing. See you next week.